All right. Um, let's forget about programming for a second. I know this is a programming class, but let's think about the real world. And specifically, let's think about how we classify things in the real world. One thing I want you to know is that the word classify literally means to put things in classes. And we do that all the time. You know, it helps us understand the world and do things. For example, biologists classify the different kinds of life, right? Uh, there's plants and animals, for example. That's one classification. Let's just focus in on animals for a second. Animals all have certain characteristics, right? They're born a day. Doesn't matter what animal you're speaking of, it has a birth date, right? A chicken has a birth date, frog has a birth date, and so on down the line. No matter the kind of animal, they all eat in some way, right? And we could go down the line. I'm not a biologist, so I can't think of everything that all animals have in common, but all animals do have some things in common. All right. But when we classify things, there's classes, there's, there, there can be classes that are related to each other. And they can be re related to each other in a very specific way. Uh, whereas one class is a more specific case than the original class. So for example, underneath animals, you have mammals, you have birds, you have fish, of reptiles, you have amphibians. I think this is all of them. That's all I can think of. Now, mammals are animals. It's just that mammals is a more specific way to describe a particular animal. So if we're talking about a dog or a cat, Dogs and cats are animals, and they're mammals as well, all right? Mammals is simply a more specific way of describing a certain group of animals, all right? And we could call that, if animals would be the class, mammals would be a subclass. And we don't have to stop there, and biologists didn't stop there when they classified things. Under mammals, we have dogs, cats, goats, uh, what, uh, what else, squirrels, and so on. And in fact, we, we don't have to stop there. Under dogs, we could have German shepherds. Eagle, uh, Chihuahua, and so on down the line. Now, no matter how far down you go in this classification system, everything is still an animal. So, do Chihuahuas have a birthday? Yes, they do. All animals have a birthday. Do chihuahuas eat something? Yes, they do, because all animals eat. And so on down the line. Now, mammals have certain characteristics, like they have fur. I think all mammals have fur in one form or another. 
So does a chihuahua have fur? Yes, it does. And we could identify other things. Dogs, we could identify. Uh, the dogs all have legs. Not every mammal has a leg or does it? I don't know. Definitely not an every animal has a leg. It's like snakes don't have legs. But do mammals, all mammals have legs? Interesting thought. Well, legs could be in, legs could be under mammals or under dogs. We're going to put it under dogs for now and, and assume that there's some mammal out there that doesn't have uh, legs. Although I sure can't think of any. All right, here's the point. A member of this group, in other words, my chihuahua, an individual instance of this class of chihuahua, is also a dog, is also a mammal, is also an animal. So in categorizing it, dog is simply a more specialized word than mammal is. It doesn't relate to every mammal, it relates to some mammals. Mammals is a more specific way to refer to certain animals. It's a specialized kind of animal. Now let's talk about programming. Let's get back to programming for a minute here. Enough time outside of programming. If we were gonna program systems like this, we wouldn't wanna have to repeat everything that was a characteristic of an animal on a chihuahua, because that would be redundant, right? We already know that animals have a birth date. So we could put an attribute in the animals class, it says it has a birth date. But what about these classes? These classes are subclasses of each other. And in programming, specifically object-oriented programming, when you have subclasses, that is accomplished by what is called inheritance. All right, inheritance works similar to where, the way it works here. When you have something that's a subclass of something else, of another class, it gets all of the characteristics of the class that it's a subclass of. In object-oriented terms, it gets all the methods and properties, all right? So if we add methods, that is functions, properties or attributes on the animal, we would not have to declare them in the German Shepherd class, the dog's class, the mammal's class. Now, there's a very strange mammal called a platypus. Oh, that's, it's not a dog, it's a mammal. Now what's different is all mammals give live birth, whereas platypuses lay eggs. So it's a difference between this and other things. Yet other than that, a platypus is like any other mammal. It has fur and so on. So in object-oriented terms, we can create classes that are subclasses of another class. And they get everything that the parent class has, plus they can add stuff or they can override stuff. In this case, a platypus overrides the way that a mammal gives birth, the, the typical mammal gives birth in that it lays eggs. But I don't have to say that platypuses and dogs and everything else have fur because that's a characteristic of every mammal. All right. This is known as inheritance. And we're going to look at the Java code to accomplish that in a minute, but I want to make sure you understand this because this is a powerful concept. 
Let's think of another example. Vehicles. What are some subclasses of vehicles? More specialized way of describing some, some vehicles. There's a bicycle. Car. Snowmobile. We'll stop at that. We know there could be a lot more. Underneath that bicycle, there can be single bike, well, let's not go that direction. We could say there is there are fixed gear bikes, bikes that only have one gear, and multi-gear bikes. Under multi-gear, there might be road bikes, racing bikes, and mountain bikes. Now, when we have inheritance, so when we have the specialization, we need to, we can perform what's called the ISA test, I-S-A. If this is true, you might have inheritance. So if I want to look at this, snowmobile is a vehicle. Is that a true statement? Yes, it is. A car is a vehicle. Is that true? Yes, it is. is a bicycle is a vehicle. So if we can say if the subclass is a or is a type of, if these statements are true, then we can use inheritance. And the first class, this one is a subclass of this one. Now, when would we not have inheritance? Well, could we put fire underneath car? Cars have tires, right? So you might think, well, maybe tire is a subclass of car. No, it isn't, because if we make the statement, a tire is a car or a tire is a type of car, then those statements aren't true. A tire is a part of a car or a car contains tires, but that's a different kind of relationship. That's not a is a relationship, that's a has a relationship. And that's something else. That's sort of like what we had in the pizza example where the orders have pizzas. An order is not a pizza and a pizza is not an order. So we don't inherit those from each other, but a pizza can have orders. And we implemented that by having an array list. No, the other way around, an order can have pizzas. So we implement that by having a, an array list of pizzas associated with the order. So key things to summarize this portion. When we're identifying classes in our problem, we may come up with classes and subclasses. The class is a subclass of another class, if we can say the subclass is a, and we can say uh, is a example of class. So a car is a vehicle. A mountain bike is a bicycle. Specifically, a mountain bike is a multi-gear bicycle and a vehicle. So that is a test is important or is a type of. When you define classes that inherit from each other. It, the, the subclass gets everything on the main class, on the parent class. 
Plus it can have extra stuff. Plus it can override stuff on the main class. All right. And it can, and there can be a sort of an inheritance chain going up. This is a subclass of this. This is a subclass of this. This is a subclass of this. So on a mountain bike, it has all the attributes and methods that are declared in the vehicle. But it might have some characteristics of its own. Maybe shock, shock absorbers or something like that. Now there's a little bit of a catch in object-oriented programming. And I'm just gonna put this catch out there and we'll cover the details of it in a subsequent week. A subclass can only inherit from one class. So, you could not put snowmobile as a subclass of vehicle and also have a snowmobile as a subclass of winter sports equipment. We can't do that. A subclass can only inherit from one class. And you can go online and read why that's the case. It would really make things confusing if you could inherit from multiple classes. So Java simply doesn't allow that. We'll see in subsequent weeks the workaround that Java does for this limitation. Now let's get to our dear old pizza example. In our pizza example, we have introduced a new class, a delivery order. Now, a delivery order is simply a more specific kind of order. A delivery order is a kind of order. A delivery order is still an order, right? Still an order. There's still going to be a list of uh, still going to be a list of uh, um, pieces associated with that delivery order. There's still going to be a price for the order. There's still going to be a delivery time for the order. You still need to know the customer name for a delivery order. You still need to know uh, the customer phone number for a delivery order. But there's some things that you need to know for a delivery order that you don't need for a regular order. For example, if it's a delivery order, you need the address. So if you order a pizza and it's going to be a pickup that you're going in to pick it up, you don't need to give them their address. You can create a delivery, a regular order without an address, but they do want your phone number. All right. A delivery order, on the other hand, you have to have an address for it to work. All right. In addition, delivery orders might have a different way of calculating the price of the order. That is, there might be a delivery charge. So the price of a delivery order is going to be the price of a regular order plus some delivery charge. The bake time for a delivery order is the same time as it will be for a regular order. Right. In other words, you know, a, a thick crust pizza is not going to take longer to bake because it needs to be delivered. Now, a delivery order does have a different calculation in it, and that is how long until the pizza is delivered. With a regular order, as soon as a pizza is done baking, you can pick it up as soon as they put it in the box and slice it. With a delivery order, 
there's that amount of time, plus there's a time for the driver to deliver it. So let's look at the code. Now, delivery order is going to inherit from order because we can say a delivery order is a order. Or a delivery order is a kind of order. So that's the proper class and subclass relationship. A, a delivery order isn't a pizza, and a delivery order certainly isn't a, isn't a unit test class. So let's open up the order class. All these things, right? Order. Yep. All these functions are still relevant for delivery order two. Let's open up delivery order and let's see what's in there. First order list, I don't you have an array uh, list? Yes. I don't see your array list itself. What do you mean you don't see the array list? I, I see that. Right. Where, where, where's the list at? Is that the, the public order, set name, get name, all those? The, the how, how is the list created? In a sense, like where's the list? What are the specific pizzas that are on that list? Yes. Okay, that's in the order. Uh, that's in the unit test class. Okay, okay. So in the unit test class, because we can't define it in uh, in an order class, right? Not every order is orders uh, pepperoni and cheese, right? right? Each one has a different one. So what we do is we create a test class to test that out. So here we create our pizzas. And we add those pizzas to the order. And that's how the order gets the pizzas in the pizza list. All right. So we have our order. We then have our delivery order. And let's see what we have. First of all, this says that the delivery order inherits from the order class. So in Java, if you see public class something extends something, this is the main class, this is the subclass. That's the syntax you use to indicate that this class inherits from the order class can only inherit from one class now there could be a chain going up like we had where dogs are mammals mammals are animals but each subclass only directly inherits from one class and this is how we say that now notice that we do not have to declare the stuff that's in the order. We don't have to declare the name and the phone number, and we don't have to declare that a delivery order has a list of pizzas, even though it does. We get those automatically because we've said that a delivery order extends the order. So I don't have to declare. I don't have to declare those there. The delivery order has it because I extend this class and this class has it. Constructors. Oh, what are the additional things though that a delivery order has that a regular order doesn't have? The address, address, city, state, and zip. So we have attributes for that. 
we're going to hold off talking about constructors for a minute. This is a struct, uh, constructor for a deliver. I'll, I'll introduce it to you and we'll come back and talk about it in more detail. It has a constructor and it can call the constructor of the main class, the super class. So this has one constructor that accepts a name, a phone number, an address, city, state, and zip, calls the main classes constructor that accepts two arguments and then sets the other four attributes. When you construct a uh, when you construct a member of the of the subclass, you have you have to, you're, you're going to call a constructor on the main class. And here we do it by specifying super and give the arguments for the constructor of the order class. Now, here we have methods that we don't have in the order class. We get and set for these. Now, here we override the calculate price of the super class, of, of the super class, right? Here we say that the rule for calculating pizzas is different. The, the price of the pizzas is different because we're adding in a $5 delivery fee. So the price of an order is we call the super classes calculate price method. Do this calculation, return the price, add five to it, and that is our cost for delivery. We have an additional function that the main class doesn't have, and that is calculate delivery time. We're gonna say we deliver within 30 minutes of the, the order being done. So we calculate the bake time, and we add 30 to it, and we get the delivery time. We've only declared the stuff in the subclass that is different than the main class. This is different because the main class doesn't have a city, state, and zip, and address. And we adjust our, our constructor accordingly. These functions, of course, uh, the main class doesn't have it because it doesn't have those attributes. Calculate delivery time, can't calculate the delivery time for a pickup order, all right? There, therefore, there's no calculate delivery time on a regular order. So that's something different. And finally, this is something different because we calculate the price in a different way. We override that method. We say that we're not calculating the price of a delivery order by the same rules that we calculate the price of a pickup order. We add a $5 charge in it. Anywhere where you see super, we're calling the function on the super class, in this case, the order. So let's look at how this comes into play. I have a unit test and I create some pizzas using the constructors. I output the value of that. So I do that for three pizzas, four pizzas. these output I didn't change the output when I copied and pasted this originally until the last one you did pardon me this one
It says four pass uh, four pass at the end. Oh, okay. All right, here's where we create the order. Here we create a regular order. All right. Add those pizzas to it, get the cost of the order and bake time. This functions exactly the way it did last week when we went over this example. The constructor creates a new object, puts it out on the heap, initializes the name and the phone number, and it creates a pointer to that location, memory location, and it stores that pointer in the variable O. So we add two pizzas on it, calls the add pizza method. Add that pizza to the list of pizzas. We ask for the cost, we ask for the baking time, and we get it. Pizza three and pizza four are the same kinds of pizzas, right? We create our order. And say delivery order D equals new delivery order. And we initialize those values in the constructor. We call that delivery order and add a pizza to it. We add pizza three and four to it. There's no add pizza method in a delivery order. That's okay. There is one in the order class. So when we call this function, we are getting that add pizza method that exists in the order class. It's going to take this pizza and it's going to add it to the array list. Do that for the other thing. Now I'm going to type in the, I'm going to output the cost of the order. D calculate price, D calculate bake time. And I'm also going to ask for the calculate delivery time, because that's something that a delivery order has that a regular order does not have. So let me save all these and we'll compile it and run it. File it and run it. Here's all the pieces we create with the output. The pickup of the uh, the pickup is twenty one dollars. Is that correct? Yeah, because this is nine. This is twelve. As it adds as up to twenty one dollars. The bake time is sixteen. That is correct because this pizza has a bake time of 16. When we look at the delivery order, the cost of the order is 26. Even though it has the same kind of pizzas, the delivery cost, the, the cost of the order is different. Why? Because we add the $5 in because the delivery order overrides the calculate price method. We first call the super classes price method, get the answer for that, and then we add five to it and get our new price. The bake time of the order is still 16 minutes and the delivery time of the order is 46 minutes, which is uh, 16 plus 30.
Inheritance allows us to save writing a lot of code because we don't have to write any of this code that's in the order class. We don't have to repeat it in the delivery order class. We just write code for the stuff that's different. A couple things I want to look for. When I first came in here, I said that. And you might think that there's something wrong with that. I said order D equals new delivery order. That is actually a legal statement because you can create the subclass. You can call the constructor on the subclass and store the variable in a variable for the superclass. So I can do that, except there's gonna be a little error. And the error is this. You know, we're saying D is gonna contain an order. Now that order turns out to be a delivery order, but all the compiler knows is that D is an order. We cannot call delivery time of order because we declared D as an order. If we declared it as a delivery order, like we did initially, then we can call D calculate delivery time. It's a little tricky. It's something to, uh, to uh, you know, to, uh, to, to, to know, all right? What's on the left hand side of the equal sign when you declare a variable that limits what functions you can call. Now I can only call functions on the order class. Yet, if I do this, let's say I comment it out. I still get the right values. Why? Because this side determines what version of the functions we get. We get the version of the function calculate price that exists in the delivery order and not in the order because we declared that variable when we, well, not we didn't declare the variable, when we created that object, we created it using the delivery order object. Let's revisit constructors for a minute. Because if you notice, I call this constructor that has one, two, three, four, five, six arguments. And that exists in the delivery order. The first thing that's going to happen whenever we call the constructor on a subclass is it's going to call a constructor that exists on the main class. So usually we're going to have super and then call one of the constructors on the super class. So in this case, we take the name and phone number and call the constructor that's on the super class. And then we finish up the stuff dealing with the delivery order. Now, if I, if I don't have this super in here, it's going to try to call the no argument constructor. And if you remember from before, the no argument constructor doesn't exist for an order because we've declared a constructor. You only get the no argument constructor if you either declare a no argument constructor or if you don't have any other constructors. So this will give us a compile error. What this is telling me is the, the delivery class is calling the no argument constructor because we didn't specify the name of another constructor and the order class doesn't have the no argument constructor. Super in there calls the super class and gives it these two values.
Notice how we could call the function on a super class simply by saying super and giving the name of the function. That may be important for your homework where you have to create a graduate student. And a graduate student's tuition is calculated in a different way than an undergrad student. Are there any questions about this? All right, uh, that's what I had today. If you run into any problems uh, in your lab, let me know. Uh, and if you have trouble getting the assignment completed in time, just send me an email and we can talk about uh, you know, where you're at and what's causing you trouble. Other than that, we'll either see you in lab or we will see you next week.